Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So it is a big day in 13F season. Okay, there's a lot of 13Fs that came out today through Data Roma. Um, some big ones. We saw Monish Pabrai. We saw Seth Klarman. Uh, there's there's some exciting stuff today. Prem Watsa, Chuck Aker. So I'm going to go through a few of the 13Fs that came out today. Uh, and show you kind of what I've started in terms of a spreadsheet with recent stocks that were bought uh, in the first quarter of 2021. There's going to be a lot more that's going to come out on Monday. So um, that's going to be an exciting day as well. And then I also just want to share a few things that I've seen in Magic Formula Screener, in Value Investors Club, okay, and on Ticker. So let's get into some odds and ends here. So the first thing, this is the spreadsheet um, that I'm in the process of building out for super investors that I track to come up with new stock ideas, okay? Uh, so you can see here today, we found out Monish Pabrai. That was the big news this afternoon. Monish Pabrai followed Charlie Munger into Alibaba, okay? So you can see here, uh, Pabrai owns like a $38 million position in Alibaba, bought in the first quarter of 2021. And that's actually when Charlie Munger bought it as well, the first quarter of 2021. We found out like a month and a half ago that Munger had bought because he filed his 13F uh, very early. But, you know, a lot of people were surprised about this, seeing Pabrai go into Alibaba um, you know, I can see both sides. On the one hand, you know, Pabrai is, is really into spawners now, right? That's his new framework, finding these long-term compounders. And clearly Alibaba fits that, right? Uh, Pabrai has talked about this in a couple different talks that he's given at business schools uh, around the world. He also talked about it in the free lunch portfolio post that he does on his blog, Chai with Pabrai. Uh, that Alibaba has the DNA of being an apex spawner. Uh, the thing that I wasn't sure about is because Alibaba is such a large company, it's like a 600 billion market cap company, um, you know, it, it's probably not going to be a hundred bagger from here. So, you know, Pabrai mentions he really wants to find companies less than 500 million in market cap. Clearly not even close with Alibaba, it's, uh, you know, uh, an order of magnitude. It's a thousand times larger than, than what he said was his ideal target. So um, it was a little surprising. But on the other hand, who's sitting behind Pabrai in Pabrai's office? It's a bust of Charlie Munger, right? Charlie Munger is Pabrai's guru, is his mentor. So, you know, if Charlie Munger thinks something is a cinch, uh, which is how Charlie Munger is thinking about, you know, making investments, it's got to be a cinch, okay? Clearly, you know, Charlie Munger saw something in Alibaba that, you know, got, got uh, both him and Pabrai really interested in this company. So, uh, we see that here. I just want to pull up, um, you know, the international portfolio of Pabrai in ticker terminal so we can see where this fits. Alibaba, the fifth largest holding, 9% of the portfolio, okay? So it's, it's a significant position. Um, he's got four larger and four smaller positions in the portfolio. So uh, meaningful stake in Alibaba for, for Pabrai. Um, so we see that here, a buy with Baba. Charlie Munger, a buy with Baba. We see what conviction it is. With Daily Journal Corp, it's the third largest holding for Charlie Munger. Pabrai, it's the fifth largest holding. Uh, we saw 13 Fs from Seth Klarman, Thomas Gaynor at Markel. Uh, Chuck Aker, Pat Dorsey, and Prem Watsa, okay? Gainer and Chuck Aker didn't have any meaningful activity in their higher conviction positions, in their top five holdings. Uh, but Seth Klarman 
had some buys. Let's pull up Seth Klarman's um, the 13F summary here. So you can see it's pretty deep. You can see there's, there's also, a, also a lot of SPAC activity down here near the bottom. But we're going to focus on Intel, which just became the largest position in Bow Post Group because uh, Klarman added to it in the first quarter of 2021, 28% add for Intel. Uh, and it's true. I mean, Intel looks cheap, you know, from a from an earnings yield perspective. Uh, it's like 10%, somewhere around there. So it's, it's pretty compelling, uh, Intel. It's also got a pretty solid history of return on invested capital. So it's been a fairly strong business as well uh, in terms of returns. But, um, you know, the big question for me is what comes next, right? There's a VIC write-up that's not too old for Intel. Uh, management doesn't seem like it's done a very good job of realizing value for the shareholders, for the business. Uh, looks like they've fallen behind some of their competitors in terms of technological innovations. So that's a big question. It's a big question moving forward. Um, you know, are they going to be able to write the ship over at Intel? So anyway, that's, that's the number one conviction for Seth Klarman. And then you've got Corvo. Uh, I don't really know what Corvo is. So, you know, I haven't dug into it. Uh, but those are the two ads in the top five positions for Seth Klarman. Pat Dorsey. Okay, a lot of activity actually for Pat Dorsey uh, in the first quarter there. Let's see, where is Pat Dorsey? Um, so we've got Facebook, uh, you know, uh, a reasonable add to Facebook, 22%. Smartsheet, uh, eBay, and PayPal, all of those had additions in the first quarter of 2021. A uh, big addition for Smartsheet. So... Uh, I've actually found a write-up for Smartsheet. I don't have it open here. I'm going to link to it uh, at the bottom of this spreadsheet, and I'll link to the spreadsheet in the description if you want to take a look at a write-up for Smartsheet. Um, you can do that. So that's Pat Dorsey, a lot of activity. Uh, and then finally, Prem Watsa. Now, this isn't... Um, this isn't from the 13F, actually. What I did with Prem, you know, I looked at his 13F, but then I went into um, I went into ticker and looked at Fairfax Financial Holdings. Okay, and there's some international activity for Fairfax that was pretty interesting. So you can see here, uh, there's a new buy. Number three, the third largest position in Fairfax Financial, okay? Uh, $359 million uh, of Farmer's Edge, Inc. Okay, you see there's, this is from a prospectus uh, on March 3rd, so it's an IPO. Um, and you can see about 60% of the shares outstanding for Farmer's Edge are owned by Fairfax Financial. So that is a very large stake, uh, almost 8% of the portfolio of Fairfax. So, you know, could be could be interesting. Uh, looks like it's kind of a, a software company for farmers to, you know, get real-time information about their crops and their fields and, and that kind of thing. So I don't really invest in IPOs. So I'm probably not going to look into this one, but it's pretty interesting that it's such a high conviction bet for Prem Watsa. So, you know, that's that's what I saw today from the 13F releases on May 14th. Again, we're going to have a lot more on the 17th on Monday. Uh, but I just wanted to share, you know, what I found here with you guys. Um, and again, I didn't cover all of the 13Fs because... Honestly, I don't track all of these investors super closely. I, I kind of have a, a group that I really track. Um, Bloomstrand was kind of interesting. So 
uh, Semper Augustus. There's a couple gold positions here. So Newmont Corp and Kinross Gold Corp. Actually, Kinross Gold uh, looks fairly cheap on an earnings yield basis. So, you know, if you're interested in gold, this could be one to look at, a gold miner exploration company. So it was really the only other one that caught my eye other than the ones I've listed here. Uh, a few other things I want to share. Um, so there's been a couple Value Investors Club write-ups. Just I think it was just, just today that came out. There's one on Topicus, which is a recent spinoff from Constellation Software. Uh, it's also held by Chris Meyer, author of 100 Baggers. Um, so if you're interested in software, I think they're targeting European software companies. It's basically a, a company that acquires other software companies, um, like a holding company for, for that, that space. So you can check out that Topicus right up in Value Investors Club. Uh, VIQ Solutions as well just had a write up in Value Investors Club. Uh, that's a recent buy from Connor Haley at Alta Fox Capital. Um, and that's kind of a, an artificial intelligence play on um, voice transcription. Okay, so kind of an interesting space as well, particularly, you know, what, making YouTube videos. Um, you know, if, if I could quickly and, and in a low cost way, transcribe the videos and have captions, uh, that would be very useful to, to a lot of members, a lot of viewers on YouTube. So uh, and I, see, I see a lot of uh, growth for that industry, voice, voice transcription, particularly with the help of artificial intelligence. Um, so those are two recent write-ups in VIC that I think are noteworthy. Um, another one that was really interesting. So I, I just today pulled a magic formula screen. This is Joel Greenblatt's screener where he uses two metrics, combines them, and then output uh, are, these, are these companies. And the two metrics are earnings yield, which is a measure of how cheap a business is, and then return on invested capital, which is a measure of how good, how strong a business is. And so you've got the top 30 companies here uh, that's higher than 50 million market cap. So uh, there's two that kind of jumped out at me. Uh, this one, DLH Holdings Corp. Okay. Uh, the reason that jumped out at me is because recently... I pulled a search for like 10 baggers over the last decade. All right, which companies in the US would have returned 10x or more over the last 10 years? Uh, and DLH popped up. So if we look at the 10 year history for DLH, um, currently it's slightly under a 10 bagger. It's like a nine bagger over the last 10 years, but 24% CAGR, I mean, that's, that's very strong. Um, and the current market cap is only 130-ish million, okay? So it's a small company. Uh, it's been a 10-bagger over the last decade. And here it is on the Magic Formula stock screener. Now, those that combination of things is, is pretty interesting. So I may have to dig into DLH Holdings Corp. Uh, fairly soon to, to see if I can wrap my head around it and to see, you know, if it if 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 it may be a ten bagger again over the next decade. So that that caught my eye. And then the other one that caught my eye is Vontier Corp. Okay, now Vontier Corp is a recent spinoff from Fortif. Fortif. Um, and, you know, this, this has shown up in corner of Berkshire and Fairfax a number of times. Uh, it seems to be, you know, the, the parent seems to have pretty good long-term compounding DNA. So if this spinoff, you know, got some of that same uh, quality DNA, 
uh, could be could be an interesting play over the next decade or two. Uh, so again, it's interesting to see it here uh, in the Magic Formula stock screener. So just wanted to uh, let you guys know that. And I believe Vontier has a write-up in VIC as well. That's that's fairly recent, so you can get more information there. Um, yeah, so that's I think that's all I got for today, guys. Uh, huge news: Monish Babrai cloning Munger. Um, follow me on Twitter. I, it's been fun chatting with all of you about what's happening with. With the 13 F filings with Munger and and Pabrai and all that, so if you're not connected with me on Twitter, uh, hit me up over there, and I'm excited to really dive deeper into these 13 Fs on Monday. I hope you guys are too. All right, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Take care.